Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are so excited and delighted to have seen this new evening. We want to thank God and we want to thank you for tuning in. Karibu Nisana. This is our midweek service. And this is Deliverance Church International, Kasarani Zimmerman. And welcome to our midweek service. Uh, if you're just coming in, you can uh, share the link uh, with your friends. You can host a watch party. It's a great delight just to be together with you this evening, even as we praise the name of the Lord who has kept us safe until now. And as we begin this service, we just want to pray, and then we'll get to a time of praise and a time of worship because the Lord has already conquered everything for you. He has conquered everything for me and we bless his name. Why don't we just pray and lift his name? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to honor you. We want to give you praise. We want to give you honor. We thank you, Jehovah God, for this opportunity that you've given to us again this night, that we can gather together, that we can just be able to worship you from the comfort of our homes. We can be able to lift your name because you have conquered everything for us, oh God, and we just choose to exalt your glorious name. We choose to magnify your name. We choose to honor you, King in glory. We choose to lift your name above every other name. So we pray that you'll find pleasure in our praises. You'll find pleasure in our worship. And you'll come and dwell in our praises because your word says that you dwell in the praises of your people. We lift your name and we worship you Adonai because you are a good God. Receive every praise and we commit this entire period that we'll be together online. We commit this time to you that your presence will be made manifest in our lives and in our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Be exalted and be magnified because we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. I'm going to ask you today if you could just rise up uh, from where you are, you can rise on your feet. And this day we want to lift the name of Jesus Christ because this far he has conquered for us. The scientists had projected that by this particular time there would have been 10,000 uh, people infected in Kenya. But here we are celebrating because the Lord has been our portion. And we can only lift his name high. We can only praise him because he has done it for us and he is bringing healing healing in this land. It's already done in the name of Jesus Christ. So rise on your feet where you are and let us praise the name of the Lord this evening in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus will lift your name on high. Your name on high be lifted high. Jesus will lift your name on high. Your name on high, be lifted high. Yeah.
that you cannot be compared to any man who is like the Lord in all the earth, glorious in majesty and wonderful in splendor, doing wonders. Who is like the Lord, seated on the throne and reigning forever? Who is like the Lord? He is king. The enemy knows that no one is like God. Who is like our Lord, the Lord Almighty, the rock above every other? Who is like our God, the Lord of hosts, mighty and victorious? Who is like our God, loving and tender, pitying us? Who is like our God? Who is like our God, dying for us, rising again, justifying us freely forever? Who is like our God, coming back again for us? Who is like our God? We proclaim no one can be compared to you, O God. We love you and we worship you. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your love. We celebrate your rule. We celebrate your eternal reign. We celebrate you, Lord God Almighty. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lion of the Lamb. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy.
joy it is for us to celebrate the goodness of our Lord and Savior. What a joy it is for us to be able to know that our King is undefeated. And so whatever it is that we are doing, we can do it whether we see it with our eyes, the results we are praying for, or whether we do not see them. All we know is that when God says a thing, he will bring it to pass. And so we just celebrate the Lord today. We're not in a hurry. We just want to love him, to celebrate his goodness, to praise his great name because he is great. We join up with the psalmist in saying that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. We join up with the psalmist in saying that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my lips. When I'm going through the thick of life, when I'm going through other things, His praise shall continually be on my lips. When I know where the next meal is coming from and I have no idea I'm going to make it out through the next, the end of this week, still His praise shall be on my lips. Oh, bless the Lord, the psalmist says in Psalm 103. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He says, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not his benefits. Remember that he has redeemed you from the pit. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. He has forgiven you of your sin. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. He gives you something to look forward to. He is coming back again. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, because he is good. Oh, I don't know about you. I sure do hope that you are excited wherever it is that you're joining us from. Today, we are just excited to think that God is good and that he's doing a beautiful thing in our midst. I don't know about you, but in this season, as we've been going through so many things, I think that if there's one thing that we, have, we might have placed on the side or put on the back burner, is the truth that our God is great and greatly to be praised. That has not changed at all. And just few moments ago the Lord put this in my heart and I just want to celebrate it together. I will invite you to join up with us. Like we said, we're not in a hurry. I uh, would invite you to join up with us in this old, old praise song that really excited my soul just a few moments ago. I want to invite you to join up together with us. For the younger people, you might want to learn together with us, but we're going to do it together. For the older generation, I'm sure while you guys were coming to the um, kingdom, you guys had these songs being sung back in the day, and we're going to celebrate together. All we are saying, if you do not understand this language, all we are saying is to say that, Lord, I have known that you are good. It, but we're going to say it in Swahili. We're saying, Baba ni mejua kwamba, wewe ni moima. It goes something a bit like this. What you're saying is, Baba ni mejua kwamba wewe umwema It's just really that simple. All right, we say Baba Baba ni mejua kwamba wewe umwema Oh sema baba Baba ni mejua kwamba wewe umwema Oh I don't know about you this is your song say ni mejua wewe umwema if you look around you, if you let your soul remember, you will realize yes. and sing this together with us. Say. All right, whenever you are, put your hands together, put your hands together, put your hands together. Jesus, take 
about how they got to where it is that they were before they got jailed. We're going to read it from verse 16, Acts chapter 16, right from verse 16. This is Paul and Silas imprisoned. It says, now it had happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her master such profit by fortune telling. Continues to say, this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul greatly annoyed turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, this man being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans to receive or observe. 
Verse 22, then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Verse 23, and when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. 24, having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Verse 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, 26, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loose. 27, and the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul said with a loud voice, do you yourself no harm. We are all here. You could continue to read it. It's a really, really interesting story. But as I was looking at this, this just jumped at me. Uh, Paul and Silas had been arrested. And the reason for their arrest was not because they were terrible people. They were arrested. And the only reason they were arrested was because they had come in the way of um, the profit of another man. It's not because they were evil men, no. They actually helped that lady by casting out the demon outside of her. But her masters were not happy. Whatever they had done, I'm trying to say, was not, was not a bad thing. It was actually in the, right in the mission. They were right in what God was planning to do. That is exactly what these guys had done. But then they were put in prison. And the Bible actually outlines that they were beaten severely. They were beaten good. In Kiswahili, we will say. These guys were really, really put down. You know? And then the, the, the jailer or, or the, the officials said to them, um, um, the commanding yeah, commanding the jailer, they said to them, keep them securely. In other words, what we would say today, today put them in maximum prison. So these people were put into very, under very um, inhumane conditions. It actually lines out what was done to them. It says that they were put, having received such a charge, verse 24, the jailer put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now the stocks were these kinds of chains that had big pieces um, and had holes. Some of them had more than two holes, such that they could put your foot in, in this side and your foot in this other side. Or, or, or and they could put one of your foot in this side and the other foot in this side. And many times it would be stretched to cause maximum discomfort. This was the kind of conditions they were in. Now, do not for a second imagine that imprisonment back in the day was better than it is right now. Right now, we know it is not a good thing for you to desire to be in prison. Absolutely not. But back in the day, it was even worse because they did not have all these bodies that are there to come and say, oh, human rights, even though you're in prison, you're supposed to, they're supposed to be human rights. No. Back in the day, it was totally different. The law actually for the Romans and for the Jews was totally different. It, 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 was, it was very unsavory for the Jews that were put in prison. And these guys were put in prison and there was no law that would cover them like that because they were perceived or they were, it was said that they were Jews. And so I'm just trying to explain how difficult the conditions were that these guys had been put in. But regardless of all this, the Bible says that though they had been beaten, severely beaten, severely beaten, and they had been thrown in, it goes without saying that their bodies were in chains. You see, many times when we're reading scripture, you can be or we can be mistaken for thinking that just because the Bible moves from line to another line to another line um, for, space, for the purposes of space, just because of that we'll be mistaken to think that it wasn't as bad as we would like to imagine. But it was terrible. These guys were beaten a serious beating. So they were probably in pain. It doesn't mention that, but they were probably, they were in pain. They were bleeding. They were sore in many different places. They had been manhandled or mishandled. It was a difficult time for them to be where it is that they were. But listen to the state of their heart or the position of their hearts. Verse 25, it says, but at, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. I don't know whether you've been unwell or whether you've ever been uncomfortable. There's something about the midnight. Man, it feels like in that midnight hour, we actually say that it is darkest at that time, but in that time, it feels like upon the uchunguyote in Agwanga Zaidi, when you're unwell, like if you have some malaria attack, for instance, at that time you're feeling like, what is happening? Asubui itafika lini. And I believe that was, the, that was the same place that Paul and Silas found themselves in. But though they were in pain, this is the position of their hearts. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. 
This was the prisoner's entertainment system inside the prison, Paul and Silas. I found that line to be very interesting, that the prisoners were listening to them. And I thought to myself, many times we find ourselves in difficult situations in life. We struggle and we suffer many hassles in this life. And people know that we are believers. Remember we said like for Paul and Silas, they had been put in prison, they had been arrested, uh, and it was not because that they were sinful people or wicked people, not at all. They were actually carrying out the mission of God. They were setting people free. They had just cast out a demon out of someone. And so sometimes when you go through situations, it is important for us to note that the things that will happen to us in this world, Jesus actually says in John 16, 33, speaking to his disciples, he says to them, listen, I tell you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will face tribulation. So you will face tribulation. I will face tribulation. The unbeliever will face tribulation. Tribulation is not all the time, not necessarily, like Pastor Kibera shared with us just last week. Uh, tribulation is not all the time as a result of the things that you've done. Not all the time. So these guys, were going, maybe you're going through something or a situation such as right now. And like the thing we are going through right now, in this season for the COVID-19, the global pandemic, everyone is going through it. Everyone is being affected in one way or another. And with all this kind of suffering that we are suffering, it is important to note that we are not the only ones going through it. Even the unbelievers are going through the kind of thing. Even the, the people who don't believe that God exists are going through the same kind of thing. It is important for us to remember that everyone is going through this thing. Yet, just, I will suppose, just like back in the day with Paul and Silas, the prisoners were listening. Right now, there are also people that are listening. Now, I want you to understand that that should not place any pressure on you as a believer. Not really. Because if you're doing anything because the people are watching or the believers, the, the non-believers are listening, then you're doing it for the wrong The motive is wrong. You're supposed to be doing it for the audience of one. That is what they were doing. In fact, it wouldn't, care, it, it wouldn't matter uh, much whether they were listening or that they had an audience or not. According to, in fact, I would imagine that their stance would be, Wate ni wafungwa. You know? So these guys were in prison, that's an important point, and they, at midnight, in that dark hour, when there was pain all over their body, and the morning was far off still, they just did what they are used to doing. They just started to lift up the precious name. They are singing praises. The Bible actually says they were praying and singing hymns to God. I don't know whether you've been to a night vigil or to a kesha where people are lifting up their songs and praying and praising and celebrating in that moment. People are praying and praising. People are praying and singing hymns in Akesha. Yeah? I'm assuming that is a kind of thing. Imagine having a worship experience inside of prison. Having a worship experience or a praise experience. Um, uh, I was watching uh, one of the gospel uh, ministers the other day. They were doing a praise -athon, what they were calling a praise -athon. And this praise -athon is where they just started to praise and they praised the whole night into the morning the next day. And I thought that was such a beautiful thing. So imagine having a praise -athon inside of prison. When we say prison, it also is significant of the, the trials or difficulties that we, we could be facing. A couple of days ago, I was looking at some of David's experiences. Like for instance, when cave, David was hiding from Saul in the cave of Adullam, and while he was inside there, his prayer was like, oh God, my heart is steadfast. Oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will praise you, O oh Lord, among the nations, for great is your name. Imagine he was hiding. His life was under threat, was being threatened. But in Inside that cave experience, that place of danger, he could still raise up his voice and say, God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing to you and make music. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, for great is your name. And I thought that is such a beautiful thing. Then much, much later, and it is full of scripture in, 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 in different places, um, you find these examples of the believers singing songs of praise to the Lord of our salvation. And Paul and Silas are not different, are not any different. Um, they are in this difficult place, but they decide we're going to raise up our voices. And we're going to pray, and we're going to call on the one that does not change. As we were praying, we were saying that... Um, we were saying that... Uh, our praise is unedited. Our praise is unbroken. You see, the circumstances that we are going through do not, do not determine how much we praise God. Because the truth is, and you and I both know this, that whatever it is that we are going through, if we are going to listen to it, there will never be a song of praise in the earth. Never at all. And you know that's true. Because there is never a time where things are just perfect. Never in this life. 
you, things could be good inside of your house, but then your neighbor's house, things could not be okay, or your friend could be going through a situation. And so never a perfect moment, not at all. So if we were to listen to the surrounding or to the things that surround us, oh man, we would never praise ever at all. And where we find ourselves right now, beloved, is no different. Our praise does not change because of the things that we find ourselves in. So what should we find do, uh, if we find ourselves in the place where we are? So what if these things do not change exactly the way we want them to change? We remember these words of God in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, when God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah and says to the exiles and says to them, listen, you guys, I'm going to come and save you after a while. About 70 years, I'm going to come and rescue you. Not right now. Build houses. Marry. Look for, 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 for investments, places to invest, because I know the plans I have for you. They're plans for good and not for evil. They're plans to give you a future and a hope. So what is your preoccupation as a believer? Your preoccupation is to fill the space that you're in, just like Paul and Silas. Listen to what happened. As they were inside there and the prisoners were listening to them, verse 26, it says, Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. I thought this was such a beautiful turn of events. It's like one moment, guys were singing uh, and praying, and guys were mourning in pain. I'm sure that, that those prison walls were full of people just mourning in pain. Unajigeuza hivi, unasikia, umefinywa. Unasikia mungine, amekukanyaga, amekugonga mgu. Because um, they, were not, they were not social distancing in prison back in the day. Not at all. Walikuwa nafinyana, ukisikia umeumua sana, unastretch mgu, unasikia umekanyaga mungine, apiga kelele. The sound that was there was the sound of complaining, murmuring, mourning. But here comes, enters two different kinds of prisoners. Two prisoners that understand this thing that Paul says in the book of Corinthians. He says that though on the outside we are wasting away, on the inside we are being renewed. This is the stance of Paul and Silas. They brought a different experience inside that prison. I want to imagine it was such a strange thing. If the prison walls had mouths to speak, they, were so, they would have been so confused. They would be like, what, what is this sound we're hearing? Is this sounds of celebration? Is this celebration inside here? I want to imagine since that prison was founded, there have never been sounds like that ever before. But these guys were the pioneers. They were the first people to bring the sounds of praise into this atmosphere of darkness and pain and despair. As a result of that, you see what happened. There was an earthquake. The prison doors were all opened. Prison break recorded in the Bible. These guys were able to get right out in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I want to imagine that it must have been also a strange sound to the prisoners. The Bible says that the other prisoners were listening. It must have been a very strange sound. The other prisoners who might have been there for a long time, I'm sure these prisoners must have been inside there like, are, are these guys singing? Is that, is that a chorus? Is, is that a chorus I hear? I'm sure these guys must have been, these other fellow prisoners must have, imagine you're in prison and everybody's going through a difficult situation and you are there singing um, a song like we used to sing in high school. Atani sikiza, atani sikiza, aelewa shida zangu, atani sikiza. You're in prison? You're going through difficulty. The other prisoners that have been there for longer than you have been are wondering, what is that song? What? Maybe they have been there for so long they have allowed the despair of the world to seep into their bones, but not Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas brought a different kind of sound to their difficulty. Paul and Silas did a kind of thing that David did when he was in the cave experience. He used his praise to light up the cave. Paul and Silas, while they were in their darkness, used their praise to light up the experience. You see, a person that has learned to praise God, like David says, I shall bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my lips. Not just in the good times, even in the bad times. A person that has understood the place of praise understands that they bear the light with them. They bear the light together with them. It is like a person who runs in the forest, through the forest. It is like a person who is running through some dark woods. He's carrying, um, he's bearing something, um, a torch with him. And he's running through it. And he does not fear anything because he knows so long as he has the torch, his way is lit. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 8 verse 12, And Jesus said to them, I am the light of the world. 
no one who trusts in me will be put to shame, will be caught in a web of darkness, will be caught in darkness in different versions, it says. Jesus, the light of the world, saying these beautiful words. Imagine if you have the light inside of you. Who is Jesus? Then it means that there's no cave that can contain you because there's no darkness in the world that can engulf the light that you bear. That is Jesus Christ. As I finish, I remembered a meme that I saw, meme or meme, that I saw the other day. And somebody was saying, the meme, the meme was of somebody saying, um, it was the, you see how they've been representing the coronavirus in the past few days? They're showing the round head with mini to spikes, and that is the coronavirus. And so the coronavirus had landed at JKIA when it came to Kenya. So this is the coronavirus. It has landed in Kenya. Um, and, you know, people are still not, they still don't know what's happening. And so <laughs> immediately after that, uh, it shows, on the first clip, it shows that, um, on the first part, it shows that coronavirus is in, has landed in Kenya, JKIA. And then later that day, Palachini in Aonyesha, uh, the coronavirus now walking through the streets of Nairobi. And there's this thought, it is asking itself, you know, it, it, is, it is very confusing. The coronavirus looks so confused. This is, Everybody's so colorful around their mouths. Things, it's, it's so confused. You know, as I was remembering that meme in the morning, I was also remembering that this is how the situation in the prison must have been so confused, thinking, despair. The devil must be so happy right now, hearing maybe in every household that people are just crying, 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 wailing the whole night, crowning this thing and saying, oh, oh, oh. How about if we change the narrative and started to just praise the Lord? If we just started to scream and shout praise? If you're a member of DCIKZ, we continue to remind you that the household hour of prayer is a wonderful thing. Whether you're doing it alone where you are or you're gathering all your people together for just that few moments in the evening to just continue to praise the Lord and lift his name. We continue to, 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 to gather in our home cells around Zoom and to praise the name of the Lord in our networks, in our meetings. If you're not part of DCIK, you're part of the body of Jesus Christ. We invite you as well to light your praise. This is the challenge we set ourselves on this week and in the weeks coming. Light your praise wherever you are. Confuse the enemy. Let all the things around us be confused. As a coronavirus, if it will be confused thinking, Uku ni wapi nimekuja kuna vitenge, let it also be confused wondering, Mbona uku natembea nasikia tu sifa, sifa kila mahali. You're in the house, but you're just praising. You're going to work, but you're just praising. You might have lost your job, but you're just praising. Because in the end, you remember that you were not sustained by your salary, not at all. It was God that sustained you through that. And he who started the good work in you shall bring it to a beautiful end. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you because of this charge you've given to us today. Dear God, we should light our praise like Paul and Silas did, like David did, like many other people did, oh God, like many other believers whose first response was to lift up a praise, like, like the Israelites when they crossed the Red Sea, like Zechariah, oh God, when, 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 when he finally received a son, like Mary when she was singing the Magnificat, oh God, all these people whose first response was praise, we want to join up together with all these saints, oh God, help us, God, to light our praise, because regardless Regardless of what happens, we know that the one that runs our life is undefeated. His name is Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords. He is a mighty warrior, undefeated in battle. Help us, Lord, to light our praise because we pray these things in Jesus' name. If you're here, you've not given your life to Jesus Christ. You want to say this prayer after me. The only way you can light up a praise is if you have a relationship with the one that is being praised. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I am a sinner, but you are the Savior. Today I realize I need you. I need you deeply. Come into my heart. Take away my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Hold my hand and lead me to the end. From today, I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you made this prayer, welcome to the family. Please comment. Let us know that you're here, that you're part of the family. Reach out to any of the numbers, the number that is right now on your screen. Please reach out and say, I am saved. Just that, and we'll reach out to you and pray together with you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord do you good. Let's light our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We will praise the Lord until the enemy is thrown into a confusion. Uh, we thank the Lord for that word that has come so powerfully during this time. And so we would encourage you to make this week a week of praise. Because in praising, the enemy is thrown into a confusion. 
at this juncture, we want to give our tithes and our offerings. And in order for us to give, we are going to have a clip that will give us directions on how to do the same in the name of the Lord. Bwana Asifiwe, we invite you to give your tithes and offerings online by the Mpesa pay bill 247247 under the account number 012012 or under the pay bill 864231 under the account number stating the purpose of your gift. You can also send a direct bank transfer to Equity Bank under the account 11802610647000 or you can send it to Cooperative Bank under the account 0112 Eight zero eight one six three eight six zero zero, or to Standard Chartered Bank under the account zero one zero two eight seven six five three two four zero zero. We also invite you to support those within our family that are not able to take care of their families in this season. You can do this by donating dry foods like flour, oil, cereals and grain to the church office during working hours which is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for distribution. We stand together in this and we shall come out victorious. Thank you so much for your giving. And we also want to thank you for having tuned in and stayed with us until this time. As we come to the end of our service, I'd like us to pray. We thank God for the gifts that he has given us. And uh, for the day that he had given us, we just want to bless the Lord for the same. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful. We thank you, Lord, that in such a time as this, you could still give us something that we could bring into your house, oh God. And we want to thank you, oh God, because you've enabled us to connect even to the word that you have brought forth, our Father. We want to thank you, Jehovah God, for every giver. We speak of your blessing upon their lives, our Father, that they will not lie that you, O oh God, will be their source, our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who have lost their jobs, we want to pray that King in glory, you will make provision for them, that they will not lack of any good thing because you are their portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for every person who tuned in today and every person who stayed on until this time. Father, we want to speak of your blessing upon their lives. Abba Father, we decree and declare that they are blessed they're going out is blessed. They're coming back is blessed. And everything that they'll touch to do is blessed, King in glory. Receive praise, receive glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are so grateful. Thank you for having stayed up with us. And we know we are soon coming back together where we will come and praise the Lord in our place of worship. We will come and greet each other and hug each other. It's just a little while and we'll be coming back. And so the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Let's meet on Sunday during our children's service at 8.30 to 9.30. And again on Sunday at 10 to 11 during our main service, main online service. Let's meet and may the Lord bless you richly. Thank you so much.